So we're cooking a roast dinner from all the stuff that we've harvested from our garden. I've got the meat in the oven and I've got the potatoes in the pot. But what I'm doing now is going outside to do the last stage in what has turned into chicken moving season. It's the last stage of getting all of our chickens where we want them to be going into the winter. So we've got that last trailer to move. This is something that we do regularly and even when they're in the trailers, you know, we still need to move them, move them onto new ground. So we've got the, the first trailer that I built, the larger one of the two. We're just gonna move that from one side of the paddock to the other because they've been down in this corner for probably three months, maybe. We move the fences around. So even within the trailer, they'll be in different areas outside the trailer during the day. But uh, it's, I showed you before, they're starting to churn up the ground there a little bit. So I'm gonna go get the tractor, which is up there and bring it down. And this trailer here closest to us is the one we're gonna move. So this is obviously a, a vehicle trailer, a road trailer. And we don't have a vehicle road hitch on this mower. So we're attached just with a piece of rope. So that's the trailer move. Now what we need to do is make sure that we've got the goats this side of the fence and the chickens that side of the fence, which uh, sounds simple. <laughs> I think I'll do the chickens first and hope the goats just end up where we need them. That's another good job done. Another thing ticked off, ticked off the list. And I just want to show you this. This is why we we're so desperate to get it moved. It's really sat here a week or two longer than we would have liked, but where we were without the, the tractor, that was the issue really. But you see, this is, this is the patch of ground that was under the trailer. They tend to sit there quite a lot during the day when it's hot. And they also tend to make their dust baths and stuff. And also because it's in the shade, things are gonna to struggle to grow. And they've also, you know, destroyed a fair amount of the ground. This is where they've created a lot of their individual dust baths that just turn into quite big divots as time goes on, you know, and they use them more and more and more hens try to squeeze into one space. So I feel happy that they're, they're done now. So last thing to do is just to move over the feeders and the drinkers and get the electric fence set up again. So I've left my wife to finish up, um, just setting up the fencer and what have you, while I go back and get dinner cooking again. We're pretty much through our winter planning checklist. You know, we wanted the, the mobile chicken houses, which we've got, we were doing everything we could in the summer and autumn to make sure that the grass recovered in our paddocks. And I feel like we've done that really well as well. Um, you know, we've got the right amount of animals where they should be and the ground is in the condition that we were hoping for. So we've had our first very, very minor frost. I mean, it hardly qualifies. It didn't even really damage many of our part plants, even our pumpkins hasn't killed any of them. You can see the signs of it on the outermost leaves, but generally speaking, you know, I'm not gonna class it as our first frost yet because everything's still growing. And I mean everything without any protection. So, but what, what I'm getting at is the frosts are coming. So the grass growing is going to slow right down. And the reason I'm mentioning that is because the last thing on my sort of going into winter checklist is to get all the grass and everything cut and tidy-ish and we're nearly there, but I'm not in a mad rush to get that done. We've got all of our hedging has been cut at least once this year, and I will do another cut sort of through the winter. There's no rush, just as and when. So I feel like we are ready for the change in season. Now I know I'm talking summer, winter. Obviously we're just going into autumn, but at the start of autumn is when we change our thinking, animal-wise at least, from summer to winter. There's only two seasons for our animals. And then obviously there's certain things you think about doing in the spring and in the autumn, like we want to be kidding goats in the spring. So we're very much on the lookout for a stud goat. But again, we do that as soon as we're at the end of summer. So that's it. That's where we are. Uh, beetroot. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like an acorn right in the middle. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so we've got some, uh, got just got some kitchen waste here from uh, the roast dinner I made yesterday. So we're going to go and feed that to some of our animals. So for a change, I just thought we'd give the, uh, give some of our veggie scraps to the goats. So they are absolutely loving the uh, the stems from the the spinach and some of the leftover kale. And uh, I. I potted some beans yesterday and they're going to eat the pods as well. But they're not so keen on the helicopter. It's all right, girls. Oh, it's a very low flying Chinook. It's better the helicopter's gone now. This is my favorite bit of feeding the pigs when they just talk to me all the way around. <laughs> I love it. It really amuses me. I know girls. Yeah, I know. So they've had a, a good chunk of bread there each and uh, some fruit and veg. They're all happy. It's just started drizzling. So, uh, because it's because of this time of year, I'm super acutely sensitive and tuned in to what the weather's doing at the moment. But after we had that one evening with a really, really light frost that we had overnight, and it looks like now we've got at least two weeks when it's gonna be quite cloudy. So we're not gonna get a frost for at least two weeks. So I'm super happy. Our, um, our autumn is looking really good this year in terms of our produce and everything. So it's mainly our squash. I know I keep on about it, but our, our, we, we've got some butternut squash plants, which have got dozens of fruit that they've set. And I've sacrificed quite a number of the fruit at the tail end of the plants to encourage the plants to focus on putting its energy into maturing the fruit that's closer to the base and it looks like we've got a whole new a whole nother two weeks for them to get to maturity so i'm thrilled about that squash plants and pumpkins really really need a long season and our squash we our first squash plants failed i think they got hit by that late frost that we had that i've mentioned before so this is a second sowing of butternut squash and there was you know a really a really good chance that we weren't going to see a crop from them but it's looking like fingers crossed if we uh maintain this frost free weather for a few weeks then we're going to have an abundance of them and i'm thrilled i love them i absolutely love them same with pumpkins squash one of the reasons i love them is not only do they deliver you a huge amount of food they're also super easy to store. You don't have to worry about glut because you literally, you just store them in your house. We just put them on the windowsill or in the hall somewhere and they'll store for months. It could turn out to be a, a good year. Not an, not an amazing year. We've had quite a lot of failures, but a good year. What are we off to, love? What we do? Oh, okay. Got you. So we're just doing a bit of jigging with the, uh, with the fences. So this is, this is the location of the one that failed. But the one we've put here is the one that we were using in Poultry Paradise, which is where the Brahmas are, my wife's big hens. Now, where they were, the fencer is kept under cover. It's an old fencer. I mean, this has really seen some action, this guy. This, we found this in a shed where we moved in. So um, this fencer here is one that we protect from the elements. So my wife's just mentioned that we're going to swap them back over and put that one back where it can be protected and put the new one out here because the uh mm -hmm. the new one's almost like a you know a really top of the range one it should have no trouble at all dealing with the elements so this is our poultry shed this is where we keep all our bits and pieces for our fences and we're well, not just poultry this is our animal shed this is where we keep all the stuff like our electric fencing spares uh chicken wire and uh, you know 
some transportation equipment and our spare batteries. My wife keeps all these charged. So my wife does do most, like she does most of all the things around here. Um, the electric fencing is another thing that she very much keeps on top of. I very rarely do very much with it apart from help her out if she, when she asks. So uh, this is the, we've also got some spare electric fencing posts and various bits and bobs. So we've got an old fish tank that we use here to help protect this one. Because it's, uh, as I say, it's quite an old one. Seen a lot of action. So uh, that just helps it stay dry. I think, did we actually have it? Did we do this because we had an issue with it? Yeah, it kept filling up with water. Oh, yeah. And we had to keep tipping it. It's still working, but it was full of water and we had to keep tipping it out. Yeah. We just did that to stop it getting in the working. So, the so the as you heard then, the, the casing is actually got a crack in it somewhere it's not watertight and it would actually fill up with water so that's what that that i remember now that's why that's over the top of it so uh my wife quite rightly reminded me and you know said we better quickly swap them back over so we'll now go and put the new one back out into the meadow are they the new fence is all plumbed in connected to the fence we're just connected to the battery. My wife's in there at the moment, just having a look. And I've got company too. What's it doing? The bar? The board is so they can tread on it. And that's my wife just said we need to go in because I'm just sat out in the rain admiring my goats and she stood out in the rain admiring our chickens. And <laughs> I have to say though, there's something to be said for that, isn't there, love? I mean, that's got to be a part of the reason why we do oh, yeah. the whole thing is because it is lovely to just sit and admire your chickens and your goats. And, sorry, love? Therapeutic. Very therapeutic. It's quite weird, isn't it, having this off-camera <laughs> conversation? <laughs> is that allowed in? Well, I'm going to take that win and wrap this baby up. <laughs> I will uh, speak to you guys tomorrow. So if you find these videos valuable, there's several ways you can support them. And the easiest of which is to press that like button and subscribe to our channel. And also leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Say hi to my wife. She always reads the comments and she can't hear me recording this bit. So that would be awesome. With that, I'll speak to you guys soon. Cheers. So if you find these videos valuable, a little bit I feel like there was something I was. Where's that cabbage? Oh no! It's on the tractor.